Welcome back to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. In the previous video, we worked on this registration page and we connected it to a database. In this video, we will be working on the login page. Now, let me warn you, this video builds heavily on what we have done in the previous set of videos where we created the registration page, used Flask WT Forms, custom validators, macros, etc. So if you're not sure on how to do this, you may find it more useful to view the previous videos in this series before you start watching this one. You can find the links to each of these previous videos in the description below. Since this has a lot of moving parts, let's have a look at the pseudocode. Since we are working with Flask WT Forms, we need to declare a login form class. So that's the first thing that we will do. We have already done this for the registration form, so it should be a straightforward process at this stage. Once we have this form, we will go to application.py and create a route for login. In this route, we first need to instantiate the class we created in step one. Next, we need to write some code using Flask SQL Alchemy to check whether the username and the password that they have entered matches the data that we have in our database. And if it does, we log in the user and we take the user to the chat room. So there needs to be a post login page that we can take the user to. We don't have a chat room page, but we will be creating it later on in the series. Finally, we need to create a HTML file which will display the login form. For those of you who are following along, you would realize that we have done all these steps in one form or the other in the previous videos for the registration page. So let's get started. This is the file where we define the fields and the validators for the registration form. Let's add the login form to this section. We need to give the class a name. We will call it login form. And then we define a subclass of the flask form we imported earlier. What are the fields that login page would have? It would have a username and a password. Let's write the code for username. This would be identical to the one we wrote for the registration form. The field would be of the type string field. The field label will be username. And let me append the words label to it so that it's clear. Next, we add the validators. We can use the inbuilt validator for input required. How this works is when you add this validator, it will add a required attribute to the input tag in the HTML file. So it would be something like this. So the user will not be able to submit the form without putting in some value for this field. We will add a custom error message over here. However, in reality, this message will never get triggered because this required tag will make the browser show the default message for the attribute required. So whatever is the custom message that we enter over here, it's not going to get displayed. However, to factor in older browsers, let's add a custom message, username required. For password, we just need to check that the user has provided us with an input. So we use input required again. And let's also add an error message. Next, you want to make sure that the login credentials match those in the database. For this, we can add a custom validator. In the previous video on registration, we saw how to add an inline validator. What this inline validator does is that it checks whether the username is a duplicate one. Now to show you an alternative method of doing it, I'm going to write the validator outside the class itself. So unlike the previous approach, in this approach, we have to add the name of the custom validator function to the validators section of this field. So to this section right here, we need to add the name of the custom function that we will write. Now we haven't written this function yet, but I know that we will call this function invalid credentials. We'll write the invalid credentials functions in a minute, but before that, let's also add a submit button, which will be of the type submit field. And we have already done it for the registration page. So I'll just copy it from there and I'll change the button text to login. Great, now let's go write this invalid credentials function. Something to point out here, unlike in the previous approach where we wrote an inline function, where there was a restriction on the name format that we could use for custom validators which we write outside of the class, in this approach we can name the function whatever we want. This function will have two parameters, form and field. This is a username and a password checker. 
Something to note here. Even though we are adding parameters, we don't actually explicitly pass in these arguments when we call this function. So over here, you will notice we are not passing in the attributes form and field. But the function does have form and field parameters. Flask WT forms will automatically pass in these values based on where we are calling this function from. Since we are calling this function from the login form, value of the form gets passed on. Since we are calling this function from this password field right here, the value of the field will be password. To check whether the username and the password are valid, we need to get the value that the user has entered in the form. We haven't created the login form yet, but the form would have a username field and a password field, as you can see right here. The username entered by the user, let's store it in a variable called username entered. And the password entered, let's store it in a variable called password entered. Now, how do we get this value? For password, it's easy. We use the syntax field.data. As we learned a minute ago, the value of this field argument will be automatically passed in. So this will store the value of the field which was entered by the user. Now, how do we get the username field data though? Since this function is being called only from the password field, we can't use field.data. To get the value of another field, there is a simple syntax. It's form, and the form here will be login form, dot name of the field, which is username, dot data. Okay, now that we have got the username and the password entered by the user, let's check whether there is a username in the database which matches the one entered by the user. We will again use Flask SQL Alchemy syntax for this. We went through this in detail in the previous video. What I want you to note is that what we are doing right now has nothing to do with custom validators per se. This specific example uses Flask SQL Alchemy syntax because that's the way we are building this form. However, to add a custom validator, this is not required. All that's required is you define a function which will return some sort of a validation error in case it doesn't match the criteria that you have defined. So I'm not going to type this again. I'm just going to copy what we wrote for the registration form and modify it. Now, if you remember, if the username entered by the user does not already exist in the database, this will return none. So if value of user underscore object is none, this means that the username does not exist in our database. So we will modify the validation error message. Even though at this stage we know for a fact that the username entered by the user does not exist in our database, however, for improved security, we don't tell the user whether it's the username or the password that is incorrect. So a generic message like this will do. Username or password is incorrect. What happens if the username entered matches a username value in the database? Well, then we check the password. We need to compare the password entered by the user and see if it does not match the password which exists in the database. So to retrieve the password for the user object, if you recollect the syntax is the object dot the name of the column, which is password. So if the password entered does not match the one stored in the database for this user, then we raise a validation error. Once again, we know for a fact that is only the password which is wrong. However, we will use a generic message, username or password is incorrect. So I can copy this and paste it here. Before we move on, there are two things I want to highlight. First, the really big reason to write the custom validator outside like this is if we want to reuse the custom validator function. Imagine a scenario where there are multiple forms and all of these forms need to run a specific custom validator. Then writing it the way we have done it right now, it makes sense. In our specific example, that's not really the case. We will not be reusing this function at all. So the only reason we wrote the function outside the class is to demonstrate an alternative method to writing an inline custom validator, the way we had done it for the registration page. The second thing I want to highlight is that we have stored the password in plain text in our database. This is not a secure way of doing it at all. In the next video, we will see how to hash the password, store this in a database, and how to verify whether the hash matches a given plain text password. Great, now that we have got that out of the way, let's have a look at our pseudocode and see where we are. So the first part is done. We have declared a class for the login form. So next, we need to add the login form route to our main application.py file. So let's go do that. 
we need to add a login route. We have already defined a route for a home page right here, which is also the route for the registration page. This chunk of code updates the database if the validation was successful. If registration was successful, instead of returning a random string inserted into database, let's take the user to the login page so that the user can use the newly created credentials to log into the page. We want to redirect the user to the URL for login route. We haven't created the login route yet, but we will. For this to work, we must import redirect and URL underscore for. So let's create the route for the login page. And it will take both get and post methods. Let's call the function login. Why is this not turning? Ah, we forgot a bracket here. Okay. We instantiate the login form we had written. So next, we allow the user to log in if there was no validation error. Since we are using Flask WT forms, we will use the inbuilt validate on submit. If you recollect, this will check whether post method was used and the form was submitted without any validation errors. Let's return a message logged in. If the user uses get method to visit the login page, let's return a template login.html. We will create this file next and we will need to pass in the form object, which is login underscore form. Let's have a look at our pseudocode and see where we are. We have created the login route, instantiated the form. We have triggered validation rules by using validate on submit. We are also returning the user to the post login page, which as of now is just a text which says logged in finally. So the last thing to do is to create the login.html file. Let's do that next. So all HTML files, we're going to place it inside a folder called templates. This file will inherit from the template we have already written. That's the advantage of using templates. We don't have to copy paste the same code over and over again. So if you look at pre-login, we have already written a basic structure for the page. The other thing is we have also created a macro to render these fields and that is saved in the file form underscore helper dot html. If you have doubts on any of them, just refer to the description below where there is a link to each of these videos. First thing is from the file form underscore helper. Let's import the macro display field. This file will inherit from the template pre login layout.html. Let's also customize the title of the page as login. For this, let's copy the title block from the template file. And we will give this page the title login. Let's also grab the content block from the template. We'll add a header, login, and just some sort of description. Enter your username password to start our chat. So this is the unique content that we want to display on this page. What else do we want in the page? We of course want to render the form. Since you've already imported display field macro, we can use that macro right now to render all the fields. We will use a form tag. I'm going to remove the class for now. The action will be to go to the route for login. We have seen the syntax earlier. To do this, we will use URL underscore for. This login route is the route that we defined right here. And the method will be post. We can finally use the macro we wrote in the earlier video. We have already written this in a previous file, so I'm not going to write it again. In case you're interested, just go back to the registration form video, which you will find in the description below. For now, I'm just going to copy the code from there. We don't need the confirmation password field. Let's go to the studio code to check what else remains for us to do. Okay, we have done everything. We have also created the login page. Then it's time to test the code. 
Let's go to the terminal and start the application. Okay, this is the registration page that we created in the previous video. It's worth repeating that this is not how the final form or the page will look like. We will use CSS later on to style this page and make it look more user friendly. Right now, we are only working on the functionality. To test this, let's register a user and let's use a name like username4. Password could be anything. We just need to make sure the confirmation password is the same. And create. If the user registration was successful, it will redirect to the login route and that route will simply display the login.html file. So far, so good. Let's try and log in using the user credentials. Okay, we made an error there. Let's go to this form. So the password is not going to be a string field. The password is going to be a password field. It's something that we imported earlier. Let me just replace it, save it, refresh the page, enter the username and the password. Username is not defined. Let's go to line 15 of the file. Okay, this is wrong. This should be this value right here, which is username entered. So let me copy this and paste it here. Let's refresh this. None type is not iterable. So we have another typo. So it should be is and not in. Let's refresh the page. Logged in, finally. Yeah, really <laughs> logged in, finally. Let's go back. Let's try an incorrect username. I'll type in the wrong password. So it seems to be triggering the right message. Let's put in a username which doesn't exist. So I know there is no username 5. And let's try and log in again. Again, all it says is that the username or the password is incorrect. It doesn't tell you whether it's the username or the password specifically, which is incorrect. Let me try and submit the form without any inputs. So it's showing me the default input required behavior. And what if I try to submit the form without a password? It does ask me to input the field. We have added the registration page and the functionality that we wanted to. Let's commit the changes. I'll stop the server first. We have added a new file and we have modified two existing files. Create login page and login validation. In this video, we created a simple login page. In the next video, we will look at the concept of hashing and we will see how to hash a password, store the hashed value in the database, and then match this hash to the plain text value which the user inputs. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.